I'm also fascinated by the fact that out of your 49 stores, you have a good mix of supermarkets and you also have the other retail uh, performances when you think about outlets. But you have a 50 to 70 uh, store target. Where are you along those lines and what else is going to be changing as you grow into that number? Well, we'll soon be uh, opening our 50th store, I think, w within the year. And we'll be, uh, the, 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 the demand, I think, uh, of course, uh, would be, the, the highest demand would be coming from food, food retail, I guess, uh, because uh, the consumption of food retail is the highest among all the retail um, segment. Now you have your five-year expansion plan. I mean, there's seven stores outlined really for development. Tell us about the challenges of being able to do that when I know land banking and also commercial space is difficult to find now because there's so much competition. How does your group now uh, manage this uh, uh, narrowing space for competition and for growth, but at the same time preserving your brand values? Well, that's always a balancing act. And, uh, but as far as far our expansion is concerned, we still have a uh, lot of room for growth. Uh, as you know, uh, modern retail is only uh, less than 30% of the total uh, share of the business. And so there's still lots of room for uh, modern retail to grow. Now, one of the things also you've mentioned in the past is the confidence in the economy. Tell us about where do you see the Philippine economy, especially the consumer class, in the next five years? Where is your, the source of your optimism for that uh, consumer class? The consumer, of course, is always changing. Uh, not, there's non-stop, you have to stay relevant all the time. But we also see lots of opportunity, as I say, if you go to the remote areas where you, don't, you, you see there's no competition. So the, the spaces that you can go there, and then these are well-populated areas that we can uh, still expand without any competition. That's, that's where uh, most of our expansion will come uh, going forward. Now, on the, you have a top-line target of 70 stores by um, you know, 2020. The question I have is, where are you along that line? Are you halfway there? Are you within target? I mean, how confident are you are you going to meet those targets as well? Uh, in terms of securing the sites, uh, we are already 40% of our target in terms of securing the site. That means uh, uh, close to about 160,000 is already secured. Okay, well, this of, like the f of the 400. So you're saying you're, you are within target or ahead of target? Uh, slightly ahead of target on, on, on the expansion, securing the sites, yes. Okay, I would imagine you're, you, the, the analyst investors are happy to hear that. Now, one thing in the future also is like, we're not always gonna be in the same management position as we are, especially as a family corporation. One of the things you are considering is succession. Tell us about that thought of the processes, that you're big on process. How your succession planning is going along and where do you see the Metro Retail Group in the future in the new hands of management, whether it's in the family or in professional management? Uh, of course, uh, in the profession, we have a succession plan for our uh, professional, but we also have our succession plan for the family. And uh, we uh, are, um, my nephew and nieces, they're all being groomed and uh, they're, a lot of them has work outside, uh, have uh, taking higher education and I think the, they'll be well, well prepared. How different is it right now in terms of the way your father groomed you and you grooming the next generation of Gaisanos and professional managers running? Tell us about what you've learned, how you're applying it, and how do you see the group growing? Uh, I, I, see, I think it's, it's harder for them than us because we're natural. We were very, very hungry and uh, our, our Third gen, you know, is, is not as hungry as we are. You built but the empire for them already. Yeah, yeah, but we'd like to make them hungry here. <laughs> the thing is how to make them hungry. Yeah, how, I mean, how do you do it? I mean, it's, it's, it's a very curious thing, especially for us at Bloomberg, when we look at these family corporations and third generation is about to inherit the business, this work ethic, the drive for excellence. H how do you instill that right now just to make sure that your legacy is preserved and even grown in the future? So right now what we're grooming them is of course to be able to work with professional and be a uh, good directors and uh, shareholder and of course be contributing to the company uh, in some ways because they're, b they're better educated than we are they have their uh, you know uh, education outside the country and all that and is the hands-on approach still there as in going to the stores being able to come in from the product 
side to the marketing side and then the display side? Is that We're still part of your program? It's part of our program to expose them to all, all parts of the business, not just retail, but even going beyond retail. And besides that, uh, I, I require my kids you know, to go to uh, military training, uh, officers training, that's even tougher. Boy, where, uh, where, do, where do you send them then? I mean, how, how, do, uh, how do you find a school and get it done? The, the school have uh, military training the ROTC uh, in, in high, high school, high school, yes. high school and uh, it's, it's uh, non-compulsory, meaning you don't have to, but I require but for them. For you, it's compulsory. Uh, for me, I re require them to volunteer to be part of the officer training, so it's, it's a very, very, very tough uh, training for them. Is that for the rigor so that they can get the kind of work ethic that really apply to a corporation? Yes, so, so at least they will know the discipline and all that how important it is to be on time, and how to respect th their commanders. You know, that's a, it's a good tip for a lot of family corporations to look at that option. I found out also later that uh, the one of the most admired company in the world, like Wallenberg, also do the same thing. But th this is already <laughs> after, after my kids are already gone through that training. So this is a best practice that you think other you know, science can do, especially as they b succeed and build a succession plan. Yes, it's cited as one of the most successful, uh, what do you call this, uh, family-run uh, corporation in the world, which is the Wallenberg. Well, it seems to be like the secret ingredient to passing on the third generation. But uh, we're, we're, we're giving them a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> you want Hopefully that they'll, they'll, uh, they'll appreciate that. You want uh, them to earn their way towards growth, right? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, Frank, it looks like the future is assured. I appreciate you sharing this journey with us, and I wish you all the best in the company and your succession. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Join me again next week as I explore the minds and the moves of the country's and world's most successful and inspirational people.